AJ Styles is WWE Champion. It does not get much better than that. So WWE Backlash has just finished and today I'm going to review the show in full in today's video. If you guys could smash the likes, if we can get 400 likes on today's video, that would be absolutely awesome. Also, don't forget to comment your thoughts down below about what you thought of this year's WWE Backlash. I thought it was pretty awesome. I really enjoyed it. Now, I've been pretty outspoken in the past about how good SmackDown Live has been since the WWE Draft. I genuinely believe they've only had about one bad show since the draft and they continued that rise on tonight's Backlash pay-per-view because once again Smackdown Live puts on a pretty perfect show. I really enjoyed this. There was no bullshit. This wasn't a six hour summer slam. This was two and a half hours of pure wrestling. It was enjoyable. It was entertaining and it was really good fun. So we've got to talk about the main event to kick things off. AJ Styles is finally WWE Champion. How good is that? Who thought we would ever say that? And who thought we would ever say that in 2016? It's only taken him eight months to become WWE Champion. This guy is well and truly phenomenal. I didn't think the WWE were going to have three new champions crowned on one night, but I'm pretty damn happy AJ Styles is champion because Dean Ambrose, he's been a pretty mediocre champion. He hasn't been that good. Even in this match, he was pretty sloppy. Now, I did think the match was pretty damn awesome. I was expecting it to be a little bit better and I wasn't fully impressed. I thought the match took a very long time to get into it, but once we did get into to it, it was pretty damn good. But I'm super happy AJ Styles is champion because he's going to be a much better champion than Dean Ambrose. I was really happy when Dean Ambrose became the WWE champion, but he just hasn't delivered. He hasn't been that impressive. They need to switch things up a bit on SmackDown Live, and AJ has been killing it on SmackDown Live. This is the perfect decision. He's just come out of a big win against John Cena, and he is now champion against Dean Ambrose. So yeah, I thought this match was pretty good. I think they can definitely put on a better match in the future, but I just haven't really been impressed with Dean Ambrose. I think he's had a few sloppy pay-per-view matches this year, I mean against Brock Lesnar, against Chris Jericho in that Asylum match, and even here, he wasn't amazing, I can definitely see Dean Ambrose putting on a better match than what he did here, but overall, the big highlight is AJ Styles actually did it, and I think that it was perfect the way, the way they did it, by having him low blow Dean Ambrose as the referee was down, absolutely perfect way for the heel AJ Styles to pick up the win and become WWE champion. How fucking awesome is that? But we've got to talk about the six-pack challenge for the SmackDown Women's Championship. This match definitely delivered. It was everything we hoped this match would be. And Becky Lynch is the first ever SmackDown Live Women's Champion. That's what I thought they were going to do. And that's exactly what they did. Becky Lynch was SmackDown Live's first women's pick at the draft. So it just made complete sense that Becky Lynch was the one to pick up the win in this first ever women's championship match for the SmackDown title. So Becky Lynch, the SmackDown Live Women's Champion, she represents the new era in women's wrestling. She is the top women's wrestler on SmackDown Live. So it makes complete sense. She won here. She is the most over woman on the SmackDown Live roster and she solidifies that this women's wrestling is well and truly alive on SmackDown Live because this was a really good match as well. I really like all six characters in this match. Everybody delivered. I'd probably say Natalia was the only one 
who didn't exactly fully deliver. But overall, I thought it was a really fast-paced match. There was only a two little, two little minor problems I had with this match. One, there was a point where everybody was throwing each other outside the ring, but they weren't really doing anything. And also, the eliminations all happened really quickly. I think we had like four eliminations in about two minutes. So when it came down to Becky and Carmella at the end, I was like, wait, what? All the rest have already been eliminated? I think the pacing was a little bit off with the eliminations, but overall, the pacing for the actual match was really good. It was really back and forth. Every woman looked absolutely fantastic. And this will go down as one of the best women's matches of the year. It was very, very exciting. And Becky Lynch, the white, the right woman, won the match. And she beat Carmella in the middle of the ring. I really liked how... Ca Carmella got the uh, roll-up pin on Nikki Bella. That was a pretty bit of, bit of a shocker, and I'd really like to see that feud continue in the future. But overall, they got that decision right. Becky Lynch, the first champion, really emotional win as well. You could tell how much it meant to her, and they got that spot on. The next match we're going to talk about is the Tag Team Tournament. We got Rhino and Heath Slater becoming the first ever Tag Team Champions over on SmackDown Live. I'm pretty surprised about that, to be honest, because the Usos, I thought they were going to walk in there. They've just turned heel. I thought they were going to walk in there, ruin the party, spoil the party for Heath Slater and Rhino, and pick up the tag team titles. They didn't really deserve it because they absolutely injured American Alpha, but it would have made sense. They've just turned heel. They ruined the party. They become champions but they don't really deserve it. I thought that was the story that they were going to go down, but they didn't. They put the titles on Heath Slater and Rhino. We'll see how that one goes, but I always thought the kind of story behind Heath Slater was he came so close, but he just couldn't quite do it. That's what I thought was going to happen here. They weren't quite going to do it at the last and final second because that's how Heath Slater's got over. That's how he's done it. He came so close to getting a contract when he called Shane Stephanie. He came so close, but I thought that's what, what was going to happen here. I thought that was the story they were going to tell, but they didn't do that. Heath Slater and Rhino pick up the tag team title. So we'll see how that does. We'll see how people are feeling about this in a few months time. I'm not really sure how this is going to go, but it's something new. It's something fresh. The Usos played a really good job as a heel in both of their matches. I thought the first match was better than the second one. Actually, the semi-final match was better than the actual final. I thought the final was a little bit slow, a bit sluggish. The Usos were playing good heels in that match, but it didn't particularly make for a very entertaining match, if you know what I'm saying. I thought the Usos versus the Hype Bros was the much better match. I really liked a few moves in this match, especially when Mojo Rawley just plowed into both Usos on the outside of the ring. And they both flew into the barricade. That was a really cool move. But I really like that move that the Usos do, where one of them holds somebody and the other one jumps and leaps on the back of the knee and it bends brilliant move and they've also got a new submission maneuver as their finisher instead of the uso splash which of course makes complete sense their heels now they don't do high flying stuff which gets the crowd going this was perfect and i think the semi-finals match was a lot better than the finals match which is a bit of a shame but overall we got two pretty solid matches a new champion you can't complain about that. The next match we're going to talk about is the Intercontinental Championship match. The Miz defeating Dolph Ziggler. Now, it's a bit of a shame because I can see they were putting on a very solid and really entertaining match. There were some new moves hit here. My favourite match was when the Miz went for a powerbomb. He slammed Dolph Ziggler against one of the ropes and then hit the powerbomb. Really cool. I also liked how the Miz was doing Daniel Bryan's moves. He did a sort of... A modified surfboard, but he didn't really do it because it's The Miz, so he just bent Dolph Ziggler's back. That looked really painful, and also The Miz did a few drop kicks in the corner, sending a message to Daniel Bryan. Is, is he going to come back? Is he not? Are they just hinting at that? This feud was a bit weird because I didn't really see how Dolph Ziggler earned this. In and then we found out the next week that he did actually have an Intercontinental Championship match. So he didn't really deserve it. This feud kind of felt like the Miz against Daniel Bryan rather than the Miz against Dolph Ziggler. But overall, they still managed to put on a pretty good match. It was kind of hard for me to get into this match and really enjoy it fully. I could see they were putting on some good stuff, but we've kind of 
seen this match probably about 20 times in the last five years so it's pretty difficult to get behind a match which you've kind of seen before and we also really knew that the Miz was going to retain his title so overall it was a pretty decent match the Miz got a really cheap win when Maurice sprayed Ziggler in the face with hairspray and he got the school crushing finale win so the Miz another cheap victory he's playing a really good heel on Smackdown Live I think him and AJ Styles are way above everybody else on the roster they pay they play their gimmicks so well it's really really great to see so the Miz and Maurice are perfect together I'm glad to see the Miz is still intercontinental champion because he's been doing a great job there's no need to change it Dolph Ziggler didn't really need it he didn't deserve it and this was really just a glorified filler match to get the title on the pay per view so we got Bray Wyatt's against Kane because Randy Orton had been injured prior to the match by Bray Wyatt backstage. Now apparently Randy Orton wasn't actually cleared to fight in his match. Apparently they were expecting him to be okay. He was supposed to be in the clear ready for tonight's backlash pay-per-view but apparently he wasn't so he couldn't compete in a full blown match so we then got Kane against Bray Wyatt which I thought was a bit weird because I like my pay-per-view matches to mean something and this didn't mean something because obviously Kane was just Randy Orton's replacement so I was glad this match didn't last too long I thought the best match the best move was when Bray Wyatt did a running senton through the announcers table onto Kane that was pretty awesome now I like the fact that they added the no holds barn stipulation sort of a way to make up for the fact that we didn't get a Randy against Bray Wyatt but overall this was a, a pretty decent match but it didn't really mean anything in the grand scheme of things I thought it was awesome and really unexpected that Randy Orton did in fact actually make an appearance he ended up RKOing Bray Wyatt obviously no holds barred he's allowed to do that and Kane got the win but um it's nice to see Bray Wyatt actually have a pay-per-view match for once I can't remember the last time he had a pay-per-view match now the fact that Randy Orton wasn't in the match um, they could quite easily have just cancelled cancelled the match and not have Bray Wyatt in a bounce at all but it's nice to see that they actually managed to get him on the pay-per-view even though Randy Orton wasn't in the match against him but sadly Bray Wyatt takes another devastating loss to Kane which absolutely sucks you would have thought Kane the older guy would have put over Bray Wyatt it always feels like Bray is one big win away from greatness but uh, once again he takes another loss but overall the Orton and Bray Wyatt feud will continue and that will probably spill out over until No Mercy, maybe Hell in a Cell or even all the way until Night of Champion uh, sorry, uh, Survivor Series. This feud will probably go on for quite a long time and probably, most likely Bray Wyatt will come out of that feud getting the, the most wins over Randy Orton. So Randy Orton gets the one up on Bray Wyatt tonight, but I think Bray Wyatt will win the feud overall. But it's a bit of a shame he lost the cane here. It's a pretty solid match, pretty solid pay-per-view. How many times did Mauro Ronaldo say inaugural? This might, have, might as well have been called WWE inaugural 2016. He must have said that word about 20 times and that's not even an exaggeration but WWE Backlash it was the inaugural WWE Backlash the first of many hopefully for Smackdown Live because this one was pretty good new WWE Champion holy balls that is fucking amazing AJ Styles is killing it he is the right champion he's gonna do a much better dot job than Dean Ambrose hopefully fingers crossed and pretty confident about that so the Miz is still intercontinental champion which is the right decision he Slater and Rhino are tag team champions. Will that be the right decision? We'll see later down the line. I thought the obvious decision was the Usos, but that's a bit of a shocker. And also Bray Wyatt taking a pretty devastating loss to Kane tonight. Becky Lynch, new women's champion. Things are pretty exciting over on SmackDown Live. So we'll see how Raw does in two weeks, but they've got a long way to go if they want to beat Backlash. So Backlash is going to get an 8 out of 10 from me. Pretty high rating. I think it deserved it. This pay-per-view was short. 
shot. It was sweet, it was to the point, and it was pretty damn awesome. Thanks for watching, guys. Remember to smash the likes. That'd be super, super cool. Also, subscribe for daily WWE videos, and follow me on Twitter. I was live tweeting throughout tonight's Backlash pay-per-view, and you guys could have been on in the fun if you were following me on Twitter. Anyway, thanks for watching. Take care. Spike your hair.